Welcome to English with Afreen. In this listening test, you will hear a number of different recordings and you will have to answer questions on what you hear. There will be time for you to read the instructions and questions. And you will have a chance to check your work. All the recordings will be played once only. The test is in four sections. Write your answers in the question booklet. At the end of the test, you'll be given 10 minutes to transfer your answers to an answer sheet. Now, turn to Section 1. Section 1, you will hear a conversation between two teachers discussing about a goodbye party for their colleague. First, you have some time to look at questions, 1 to 4. Now listen carefully and answer questions 1 to 4. Hi Tony. Thanks ever so much for coming. You know we've been asked to organise something for John's farewell. Yeah, sure. Uh, it's about time we started working out details. Exactly. We don't want to leave it so late that it's double the work. Hmm, mm, right. Uh, do you want me to take notes? Oh, that'd be great, thanks. Right. First thing is... When is the best time to hold it? Well, he leaves on the 24th of December. So what about the 22nd? Yeah, I think that's about right. We want it quite near the time, don't we? Sure. Uh, and what about a venue? In college? Uh, a hotel? I think a hotel will probably work out rather expensive. And I've been looking at the college dining room. That seems pretty reasonable. Mm, fine. Yeah, why not? And then we ought to be thinking about invitations. Mm. Um, who mustn't we forget to invite? <laughs> <laughs> well, obviously, John and his wife. Oh, right. <laughs> uh, and the director. Uh-huh. The office staff. Yep. And all the teachers and all the students. Uh, anyone else? Uh, faculty heads? Mm, no, better draw the line. I don't think it's necessary. Yeah, you're right. I don't mind writing the invitations. Uh, when shall we get them out for? Enough time, but not too early. Uh, what about the 15th of December? Well, there are exams on the 16th. Better avoid them. Mm, 10th? Yeah, that should do it. Before you hear the rest of the conversation, you have some time to look at questions 5 to 10. Now, listen and answer questions 5 to 10. So, what does that leave? Oh, yes, um, a present. Um, would you mind doing that? No, not at all. We usually go around with an envelope during coffee break, don't we? Yeah, coffee break's always the best time, because people have got their money handy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. Uh, do we suggest an amount, or does it seem a bit unfair? No, I think people welcome it. We suggested $6 last time. Is that okay? Yeah, plenty, I would have thought, which should leave us with about $90. Mm, have you any ideas for presents? Well, I've been having a little think. I thought, um, well, you know, uh, he loves music. Mm, yeah, and books. So I thought I'd check on um, prices for well, uh, perhaps CD players? Yeah, that's uh, that's a good idea. And also I thought maybe, you know, a set of dictionaries. I heard him say he needed a good one. The other thing he was saying last week was that his computer printer had broken. Um, no, uh, I'd be really frightened about getting the wrong type. Okay. The other thing is something for the home. 
Jill suggested a coffee maker. Oh yeah, I'll certainly find out what they cost. Uh, okay. Have you got all that down? Uh, yes. Now, we need to think a little more about the money. I know we've got a set amount from the social fund. Right.、Uh, what does that cover? It's meant to cover the cost of the room. Yeah. And a certain amount for food. And also drinks. Oh yeah, certainly. But will it be enough? What we've done in the past is to ask guests to bring some snacks. Right. We don't ask them to bring more drinks because we figure that's、uh, well, that should come from the social fund. Okay.、Uh, anything else for the guests to bring? Well,、uh, oh, some music、mm. because there'll be a tape deck there in the room, and we can have some dancing later on.、Uh, anything else? Well. <sighs> It's just a thought, but a couple of years ago we had a really good party where we set up,、uh, you know, <laughs> some simple games. <laughs> yeah, great.、Uh, wasn't it based on photos from the students and teachers? <laughs> That's right. <laughs>、uh, so we should ask the guests to bring photos. Okay, I'll put it on the invitations. Now the last thing is,、um, who shall we ask to do the speech?、Mm, <laughs> don't you think it might be nice to have one of the students? Well.、Uh... Than the student leader. Yeah, much better than the director giving speeches again. Okay, then I'll ask her. Hmm, <laughs> lovely. So, is that all? It looks like it. Great.、Oh, thanks ever so much. That is the end of section one. You now have half a minute to check your answers. Now turn to section two. Section two, you will hear a pre-recording message on Travelite Travel Agency Information Line. First, you have some time to look at questions eleven to fifteen. Now listen carefully and answer questions eleven to fifteen. Thank you for calling the free Travelite Travel Agency Information Line. You will not be charged for this call. In order to deal with all calls effectively, we offer you a number of options. Please listen carefully and press your required number at the appropriate time, or dial a new number. If you want to hear about special offers, please press one. If you want to hear our latest price lists, please press two. If you want to make a complaint, please press three. If you want information about our new walking holidays, please press four now. Thank you for calling our Travel Light Walking Holidays line. We have been offering a wide variety of walking holidays to suit all tastes for just three years, but already we have won two awards for excellence in this field. We offer guided walking tours to suit the discerning traveller in twelve different centres throughout the whole of Western Europe. We are planning to open our first centre outside this area in the coming year, so watch out for developments. But the pride of Travel Light is the level of guidance and support we offer on our walks. All are planned in detail by our highly trained guides, who all work in a variety of different Travel Light locations, so we can guarantee standards. 
Each day we offer three separate walks catering for all skills and fitness levels. We also pride ourselves on our friendly service, particularly important for the increasing numbers of people who choose to holiday alone. Unlike almost all travel operators who happily charge large supplements for single rooms, we guarantee that no single client will pay more, even when only double rooms are available for them. And the day doesn't end with the return to base. After our dinner at communal tables designed to make all our guests feel part of a family atmosphere, entertainment is laid on nearly every night with tour leaders on hand to organise lectures, games, quizzes and respond to any special request from guests. Before you hear the rest of the talk, you have some time to look at questions 16 to 20. Now, listen and answer questions, 16 to 20. The following is a summary of costs and special inclusive offers on holidays for the coming summer. We have three lengths of holiday, 3-day, 7-day and 14-day. The 3-day holiday costs $180 for all accommodation, food and walking and for the first time this year we are including in that price the cost of picking you up from the nearest station. The 7-day holiday costs $350 per person and, as well as including the offers of the 3-day holiday, also includes a magnificent book giving the local history. On top of that we are able to include free maps for you to better enjoy the walking and even plan in advance if you wish. For the 14-day holiday, our special price is $690 per person, and that includes all the offers for the 3- and 7-day holidays, plus membership of a local walking club, so you can better enjoy the full flavour of the local life. For further information, please contact your local travel agent. Thank you for calling the Travel Light Travel Agency Information Line. That is the end of Section 2. You now have half a minute to check your answers. Now turn to Section 3. Section 3. You will hear a conversation between two students who are studying to be teacher, talking about science experiment. First, you have some time to look at questions 21 to 26. Now listen carefully and answer questions 21 to 26. Hi, Sue. Hi, Mike. So what happened to you last week? Oh, I was sick with the flu. What's this I hear about a big assignment we've got to do? Oh, well, basically, we've got to find two science experiments to do with a group of eight-year-old children at the local primary school. 
and we've got to complete it by the end of the week.、Oh, that sounds like hard work. Where are we supposed to get the ideas for these experiments from? Well, I managed to get hold of two books from the library. Oh, well done. How about if we take a look at the experiments in this book first and see if anything looks suitable? I can make notes as we go about equipment and the purpose of the experiments. Okay, let's see. Um, the first experiment is called "Make Your Own Hovercraft," <laughs> which sounds very ambitious. <laughs> Mind you, you only need twenty balloons and a table. You don't need any special engines or anything like that. What do you do with it all? Uh, you blow up the balloons and you balance the table on them, upside down, of course, <laughs> and the kids get to ride around on it. You know, the other kids sort of push them around the room. The main purpose is to show how hovercrafts work and how things hover around on just a cushion of air. Okay, that doesn't sound too bad. Okay, ready for number two? Mhm.、Mm、Now this one is called unusual measures of lengths, and you basically use lots of paper clips. The kids go around the class measuring things. You know how long the desk is and that sort of thing.、Um, And then they all compare their answers.、Uh, and basically, because not all paper clips are the same lengths, they should come up with some strange answers. <laughs> It's supposed to demonstrate the importance of having fixed units of measurement.、Mm、hmm. Yeah, that's not bad. Okay. Now for number three, you need rock salt or copper sulfate. Oh, I'm not sure about that. Well, just put down the rock salt then.、Um, apart from that, you only need a jar of water. Um, and basically, you dissolve lots of salt into the water, and watch the crystals form. So it basically teaches the kids about growing crystals. Yeah, I suppose it would be nice to grow something. Hmm. Let's move on and have a look at number four. Okay, this one is called spinning color wheel. It looks like you get some cardboard and draw a circle on it, divide it into six equal segments, and color each one in. Using different colours, then you thread a piece of string through the middle. So we'd need some string as well. Yes, sorry. Um, and you spin the wheel around, and if you can get it spinning fast enough, hopefully the colours all merge and show up as white. Oh, I didn't know that. What's the principle behind it? Well, it's pretty elementary physics, really. It teaches them about how white light or ordinary light is made up. Hmm. Well, that doesn't sound too bad. Now there's only one more left in this book, isn't there? What does that one say? Um. Well, it's another one where they'd get to make something. Sounds very interesting. You need quite a lot of equipment, actually: a hand drill, an old record, a pin or needle, some paper, and a bolt.、Mm, go on. What do they have to do? Well, they basically make a record player. The main idea is to teach them about recording sound. But hopefully they'd also see that you need motion and an amplifier to make the sound heard. Okay, well it does sound interesting. Shall we go through all of those again and decide if any of them are going to be suitable? Before you hear the rest of the discussion, you'll have some time to look at questions twenty-seven to thirty. Now listen and answer questions twenty-seven to thirty. Right, number one. I thought this one sounded nice. There'd be lots of activity, and it doesn't need too much in the way of equipment. Yes, that's true. But don't you think it's a bit risky to get a group of eight-year-olds pushing each other around a classroom like that? <laughs> well, someone could get hurt. No, I don't like the sound of that one at all. Maybe you're right. What about number two with the paper clips? It sounds tame enough. Yes, a bit too tame, if you ask me.、Mm. I think it needs to be something a bit more active and interesting than that, don't you? Yes, I suppose you're right. We won't get a very good mark if the children don't actually enjoy the experiments, and I suppose we could turn them off science for good. Well, what about the next one, number three? Now, I quite like the idea of this one. Yes,、yeah, so do I. But I seem to remember when we did it at high school, 
We had to wait up to a fortnight before we saw any halfway decent results. Oh yes, well that won't be any good then. We'll only see the kids for one or two hours at the most. Yes, and we have to do the experiments and write up our results within a week, so that one won't do at all. Okay. Well, what did you think of number four? I like the idea of it, but do you think it will be a bit elementary for them? Well, they are only eight, you know. I know, but you know what I mean. Don't you think the activity itself is a bit babyish?、Mm, maybe you're right. They might have fun, but I mean, cutting out a circle and colouring it in. Okay. Well, what about number five? I thought this one sounded a bit too good to be true. <laughs> Great equipment. Yeah. But don't you think it's a bit ambitious for this age group? I mean, I don't want to start off something and then have to abandon it if they just can't cope with it. I could see us ending up doing just about all of the work for them. I guess you're right. Oh well, maybe we could store that idea away for later. Yep. Let's hope this second book has something better. That is the end of section three. You now have half a minute to check your answers. Now turn to section four. Section four. You will hear a student giving a presentation about a type of trees known as the eucalyptus in Australia. First, you have some time to look at questions thirty-one to forty. Now listen carefully and answer questions thirty-one to forty. Today, I'm going to talk about the eucalyptus tree. This is a very common tree here in Australia, where it's also sometimes called the gum tree. First, I'm going to talk about why it's important. Then, I'm going to describe some problems it faces at present. Right. Well, the eucalyptus tree is an important tree for lots of reasons. For example, it gives shelter to creatures like birds and bats, and these and other species also depend on it for food, particularly the nectar from its flowers. So it supports biodiversity. It's useful to us humans too because we can kill germs with a disinfectant made from oil extracted from eucalyptus leaves. The eucalyptus grows all over Australia, and the trees can live for up to four hundred years. So it's alarming that all across the country numbers of eucalyptus are falling because the trees are dying off prematurely. So, what are the reasons for this? One possible reason is disease. As far back as the 1970s, the trees started getting a disease called Mundula yellows. The tree's leaves would gradually turn yellow, then the tree would die. It wasn't until 2004 that they found the cause of the problem was Lyme. Or calcium hydroxide, to give it its proper chemical name, which was being used in the construction of roads. 
The lime was being washed away into the ground and affecting the roots of the eucalyptus trees nearby. What it was doing was preventing the trees from sucking up the iron they needed for healthy growth. When this was injected back into the affected trees, they immediately recovered. But this problem only affected a relatively small number of trees. By 2000, huge numbers of eucalyptus were dying along Australia's east coast of a disease known as Bell Minor associated dieback. The Bell Minor is a bird, and the disease seems to be common where there are high populations of Bell Miners. Again, it's the leaves of the trees that are affected. What happens is that insects settle on the leaves and eat their way round them, destroying them as they go, and at the same time they secrete a solution which has sugar in it. The bell minor birds really like this solution, and in order to get as much as possible, they keep away other creatures that might try to get it. So these birds and insects flourish at the expense of other species, and eventually so much damage is done to the leaves that the tree dies. But experts say that trees can start looking sick before any sign of Bell Minor associated dieback. So it looks as if the problem might have another explanation. One possibility is that it's to do with the huge bushfires that we have in Australia. A theory proposed over 40 years ago by ecologist William Jackson is that the frequency of bushfires in a particular region affects the type of vegetation that grows there. If there are very frequent bushfires in a region, this encourages grass to grow afterwards, while if the bushfires are rather less frequent, this results in the growth of eucalyptus forests. So why is this? Why do fairly frequent bushfires actually support the growth of eucalyptus? Well, one reason is that the fire stops the growth of other species which would consume water needed by eucalyptus trees. And there's another reason. If these other quick-growing species of bushes and plants are allowed to proliferate, they harm the eucalyptus in another way by affecting the composition of the soil and removing nutrients from it. So some bushfires are actually essential for the eucalyptus to survive as long as they are not too frequent. In fact, there's evidence that Australia's indigenous people practiced regular burning of bushland for thousands of years before the arrival of the Europeans. But since Europeans arrived on the continent, the number of bushfires has been strictly controlled. Now, scientists believe that this reduced frequency of bushfires to low levels has led to what's known as dry rainforest, which seems an odd name as usually we associate tropical rainforest with wet conditions. And what's special about this type of rainforest? Well, Unlike tropical rainforest, which is a rich ecosystem, this type of ecosystem is usually a simple one. It has very thick, dense vegetation, but not much variety of species. The vegetation provides lots of shade, so one species that does find it ideal is the bell minor bird, which builds its nests in the undergrowth there. But again, that's not helpful for the eucalyptus tree. That is the end of section four. You now have half a minute to check your answers.
That is the end of the listening test. You would now have 10 minutes to transfer your answers to the listening answer sheet. If you score 1 to 18, you are unlikely to get an acceptable score under examination conditions, and we recommend that you spend a lot of time improving your English before you take IELTS. If you score 19 to 27, you may get an acceptable score under examination conditions, but we recommend that you think about having more practice or lessons before you take IELTS. If you score 28 to 40, you are likely to get an acceptable score under examination conditions, but remember that different institutions will find different scores acceptable. Thanks for watching. Please like, share, and subscribe to the channel. We really appreciate it.